Hey y'all, today we are building our pencil case out of this one piece of wood. We're going to do it all out of hand tools, so the first thing we're going to need to do is break down this board. I used the scribe to mark all sides of the board for both cuts so that it would be easier to track the cuts throughout the process. We're going to split it into three smaller pieces so that we have enough material for the whole project. So I have to scribe two separate lines all the way around the piece, splitting the board into thirds. I started on a corner so I could track my accuracy on both sides of the board, then slowly continued rotating that board in the vise, continuing to use my previous cuts as guides for my next cut to keep them all in line. You can see the blade holder on top of this pole saw protrudes some, so I can't use it to go completely through all the boards at this point. But once the entire board is grooved, I switch to my flush cut saw to finish the final cuts. It's too flimsy to do the starting cuts, but it's more aggressive tooth pattern makes moving through the center section much easier. Though the cut isn't perfect through the middle with this technique, it's not bad, though it may be time to order a sturdier pole saw to do this all with one saw. I repeated that process a second time to finish the splitting. To clean up the boards, I thought I would use some 100 grit sandpaper to smooth it out, but it wasn't cleaning up enough of the waves in the board. I ended up getting out my new shooting board and planing the surfaces with my sergeant equivalent of a Stanley number no. 4, and this did the trick. This was my first time really using it, and I can see why some people really fall in love with this tool. The wood shavings are very satisfying when you see them curl out after a long cut. I'm not sure what wood this is, but it came out of an offcut bin at Rockler, but it's very brittle against the grain but the end result seemed to come out pretty flat. After that, a quick sanding and the boards were ready to use. It was now time to break down the boards into the pieces we need for the holder, five in total. Now to connect the pieces, we're going to miter all of the corners to give a smooth appearance for the final product. Using the 45 degree jig on the shooting board, I mitered all of the joining edges on all of the pieces. It was tough going against the grain and we had some blowout, but once I got the side pieces going with the grain, it was smooth sailing. If you missed my build video on this shooting board and jigs, I will drop a link for that here. I gave all of the sides a quick sanding to clean up all the surfaces, and then started to find the best joint patterns to get the best final product. To glue together the miters, we're going to use the painter's tape trick of lining up all the pieces really tight next to each other. That way we can have the tape act as a clamp once it's assembled. Last time I did this I didn't use enough tape, so this time we're going to double up to make sure the entire surface is taped for the clamping action. A healthy portion of glue for each of the joints, and then we will start to fold the pieces together. I made the mistake of having extra tape on both sides here when I really should have just had it on one. So the final fold is a bit messy here, but it got done in the end. I also wanted to attach the bottom via the same method here, but that may have been a little too aggressive as you'll see here in a second. After drying, the miters looked really good. You can see some areas where right, the miter on the shooting board had a few blowouts in the ends, but that's just learning for the next project. One thing that stuck out though is that the base dried unevenly, which ended up having each leg be a different length. To fix that, I ended up just cutting off the base at the same height on each side and then glued on a new base. Problem solved. I also mixed up some glue and sawdust to make some filler putty for the rough parts of this project. Once dried, I cut the base to size with a flush cut saw. 
and sanded the project. Applied the first coat of satin poly spray, gave it another light sanding, and then a final coat of this satin poly spray. And this is the final product. Overall, it's a great first project to practice using the shooting board in the jack plane. And if you enjoy this video, be sure and like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you on the next project. Thanks. Mm -hmm.